You hear that? Exactly. That's why I'm heading out right now. The forecast does not look good. I was expecting it to be raining already, so now I'm gonna be heading out early. And basically, the purpose of this is I wanna be training in any and all conditions, because when I show up on race day, I don't know if it's gonna be raining, I don't know if it's gonna be windy, I don't know if it's gonna be snowing in July, I don't know. So I wanna be able to train in any and all conditions, and that's what I'm doing today. And it looks like today's gonna to suck. That didn't suck as bad as I thought and I feel like there's a few reasons for that and I think one of the main reasons is because of the reason why I actually went out and did it during the rain is I think one of the reasons and I've just been putting myself through so much of these shitty conditions that I'm starting to get adapted to it and it like a shitty situation isn't as shitty as it once was because I keep putting myself through all this stuff the two weekends ago or three weekends ago was definitely by far the worst I've ever actually been in a situation. Like my hands were frozen. I didn't have gloves on and I knew it was going to be cold, but it, it I didn't see rain on the forecast. And then when I got out there, it just rained the entire time. And that made it by far the worst ride. And I <laughs> the entire time I was thinking, I was just, there's a line between stupid crazy and trying to push yourself and i'm like i don't know if i'm past that line yet because that ride was so bad my hands were frozen i was shivering literally the whole three and a half hour ride it was it was by far the absolute worst i think it was around 30 to 40 degrees out and it rained the entire time i was just completely frozen on that ride but honestly i think Another reason why this ride wasn't as bad is because I did prepare a little bit more where I wore gloves, I wore my Under Armour shirt underneath me to try and help prepare for that worst case scenario. I knew it was going to be raining, so I had that preparation in advance. But I think it is that main issue where it's like, I've been putting myself through all this crap and it's just kind of building up. And then like when I say get to Lake Placid and maybe it's pouring rain out and it's not ideal conditions, I've been through all of that and it's like, okay, I can deal with this because I trained during this and it wasn't that bad and I got used to it. So I think that is one of the good things. And I'm not saying the ride wasn't bad. It, so it, there's like both sides to it. The first side, it sucked. The maybe first hour and a half, it was just raining nonstop. I think for the first hour and a half, it just basically rained. And my glasses, they started fogging up. So what I had to do was push the helmet a little bit above so there was separation between the two because I think it was holding in some of the hot air from my head or whatever. And then it would slowly uh, be able to unfog itself. So that kind of sucked, but honestly, riding in the rain wasn't too bad. It was during all the hard segments, which is good, and it kept me warm because I was going through all the hard segments. So the first hour and a half rained, and then after the rain was honestly the worst part of the ride for maybe like the next hour, hour and a half, because rain stopped. I'm just completely drenched. I got like two pounds of water in my, my shoes. Everything's wet and I'm just riding. I got nasty wind that I'm dealing with. So I'm trying to deal with all that. And that just, that was probably the worst part of it where the rain, I was like, okay, I knew there was going to be rain. This is going to suck. And I honestly wasn't that cold during that time. And then once the rain stopped, it's <laughs> ironically when the probably worst part of it actually was. So just going into the actual ride itself, I, ba I basically toured all of this like Windsor Essex County area is what it's called where I live. And I feel like I saw more of this actual area in this four and a half hour bike ride than I've seen my entire life because there are so many areas that I went to that I've never been to, I've never heard of. And I'm like, and this is all within like 
couple minute drive, maybe not a couple minutes, but like within a reasonable amount of driving. And I've like never seen any of this area. So I, I just thought that was really ironic that I basically saw more of this area in a four hour span compared to my whole life living here. But it's been my longest ride, which is awesome. Got 95 miles on it and I'm really happy with my pace. The only issue that I would say with it is like, it's good to see that there's just not much elevation gain to it. Whereas in Lake Placid, there's going to be a lot of elevation gain. So it's like, but at the same time, majority of this ride was in zone two effort. So there's like both sides to it that I do believe that I think this is going to be, this is promising to see because I don't think I really ever saw averaging 21 miles per hour on any ride, whether it was like an hour, two hours, 30 minutes. So seeing 21 hour or 21 miles per hour over four and a half hours is a really good, especially for myself. And then just kind of looking over everything, it was just like, I still don't have a power meter and I really need a power meter because right now I have my segments to be focused towards my heart rate. And I really struggled to be able to get my heart rate in a zone four. And I was like going all out and I could not get my heart rate up to, I think it's between 156 and 164. And I was just struggling to get there and I was trying so hard and I just couldn't actually make it. But I'm really happy with this ride. And like, honestly, it was such a nice ride and it went by really quickly. And especially compared to last weekend, last weekend, it's basically a loop that I do and I got 84 ish miles, I think. And the thing that I think that made this route so much better is that I'm on a completely new road every single time and I'm not going back and forth. Whereas the other road or the other route I did, I'm on that same road four times. I got to go out, back, out, back. And then it's just get extremely boring being on the exact same road where this is 30 minutes longer than what I did last weekend and I thought it went by a lot faster and it was a lot nicer. I saw so many different areas that I never really saw so really happy that I did this ride and this is one thing that I'm just trying to do is prepare myself in any single situation that can potentially arise whether they're I was in Tucson and I was riding in hail or now I'm here riding in cold rainy weather. It's just like I want to be able to be as prepared as possible for any cir circumstance possible because that's one thing that happened with my marathon when I showed up on race day. You can't really avoid this, but I showed up and I got sick on the race day and obviously I'm not training. Um, can't really get sick and be like, okay, I'm going to train and run a marathon right now and see how it goes. I can't really do that during training, but just trying to do as much as I can during training to be able to show up on race day and be like, okay, I'm going to do, I've trained as good as I can. There's nothing more that I could have really done. Whereas I could have taken it easy today. I could have went on Zwift and just been four and a half hours on the Zwift trainer and I decided to head out there and endure the shit. So that's basically what I'm planning on doing the rest of the way out here. If it's raining, I don't care. I'm going out there. I'm training, biking, swimming. Doesn't really matter. Swimming's inside. I've swam outside in the rain at Tucson. So, I mean, swimming in the rain isn't really anything crazy. But biking and running, doesn't matter what the weather is. I'm going to be going out there and getting it done. All right, so the weather conditions outside is actually really nice right now. And the ideal conditions that are not ideal are actually in my legs right now. So I'm currently in the third week of my training block. So my training block currently goes three weeks on, one week off of like a recovery week where the training volume gets cut by about eight to 10 hours. And currently my legs are really tired. I did a workout yesterday and ironically, one of the exercises I kind of, I, I think I just stretched one of my muscles like right on the inner thigh. It's a side lunge and my inner thigh was hurting quite a bit for the rest of the day and I tried massaging it to fix it and it's feeling good now but basically everywhere else, my legs, they're just really sore because yesterday's workout was a heavy or a higher intensity of legs as opposed to upper body or everything else. So. Currently, my legs are really tired. I'm in the third week of my training block and then I get my recovery week. So I got to make it through this week and I got a bike ride coming up and it's a tough workout where it's two by 11 minutes at a zone four effort and then one by 12 minutes at another zone four effort. So 
this is gonna be putting my legs to the test to make sure I can actually get through it where maybe on race day, my legs won't be as tired, but if I'm able to get through the training weeks when my legs are tired and like I'm trying to recover while under stress, when I don't have that stress on my body, on my legs, it's gonna prepare me a lot better for a race day. So currently my legs, a bit tired, a bit sore from yesterday's workout, but I got this bike workout and then off of the bike, I got a 45 minute run that runs an easy 45, but we're gonna be powering through it, training while our legs, I mean, I don't really have any other options, but yesterday's workout, it just destroyed my legs and like the inner thigh, I feel like I just did a workout and hit a muscle group that I never hit before and now my legs are just extremely sore. So. I'm gonna be doing this bike workout, it's a tough one. And then I got 45 off the bike and I just gotta power through it. So this is one of the other ideal, not ideal conditions that I'm gonna be training through to make sure that I'm as prepared as possible when race day comes. So let's hop on the bike, get this workout in. And then after that, we're going on the 45 minute easy run. Quick fuel, maple syrup gummy. All right, let's run. got back from my ride and my run I still don't have a power meter and a power meter would have been great for this ride I should be getting it this week though which is good news but with this workout it had cadence work and it goes bases based off of my heart rate and I find it can't get my heart rate really high to the zones that it wants me in so I struggle with that. So it's basically an effort level. And with this one, it was a cadence. And honestly, I'm really happy with it. I got about 22 miles on this 60 minute ride. And I think this is the first time I've actually averaged 22 miles per hour on an overall ride, which is really good. Really good seeing the progress and everything like that. So the first two sets at 11 minutes was at a 70 cadence. And my legs, oh man, they were, it was, it was a struggle. It was a struggle. They, I don't, I don't know. It like the first few minutes was fine, but I think it was just the endurance to be able to keep my legs to keep going. So I think that really played a factor in it from my legs being tired from yesterday. And it seemed like there was a headwind, but I think it was more of a crosswind. So, and I just basically did this off of effort level. So the first 11 minutes at 70 cadence, I, it was so tough. I was in the lowest or highest, I don't know which one it is, the lowest gear, I couldn't go any farther, and it was just so hard to just pedal. <laughs> it was a struggle, but I think I was around a 70 cadence. Basically how I do it is just count for 30 seconds and double it and see where I'm at. And yeah, I think I was around 70. The way back was the 12 minutes at 90 cadence, and same thing, based off of effort level and trying to guess exactly where I'm at with my cadence. And both of them went pretty good. My average speed was about 23 to 24 miles per hour. So I'm really happy with that, just this whole effort. But my my legs, they were just so shot. I, I feel like it was more of the endurance part of it as opposed to just getting the power in there. I think I was able to get the power. It was just my being able to hold that for the entire duration of the actual workout. And then I came back, got a quick snack in, quick uh, gummy that I made, my maple syrups. And then I went on the easy run. And honestly, I completely forgot that my legs were sore, my legs were tired. And after a few minutes, I was just kind of running. But one thing that did happen on that run, I don't know what it was, but like right on the top of my outside foot, it felt like a bone was like sticking up through my shoe. At first I thought it was like the tongue of my shoe. So I tried playing with it and fixing it and that didn't really help or do anything. So after about 15 minutes, it somewhat went away, which is good. So I got to keep monitoring that to make sure nothing serious happens there. 
but I got just under six miles on that run. Just an easy run off the bike with a few strides in there. But overall, I felt I'm feeling really good on the runs off the bike. So I'm really happy with that, and it's good to see. It's just going to be how am I going to be able to do a marathon after 112 miles off of the bike. But from basically all my practice of going off the bike, I find I'm faster, which is good. It might be because my legs are warmed up, but I find I'm faster and it's harder for me to go slower off the bike, which is, I guess, good. It just depends on if I'm able to have that endurance throughout the whole marathon and be able to maintain that same level of effort throughout the whole actual marathon. But yeah, legs, they sucked during the bike ride. It was tough efforts, but other than that, the run, I felt... I was cruising. I was cruising. I was taking my time. I was chilling and felt really strong on that. But the bike ride, that was a that was a little bit of a struggle and just having the endurance there. So just trying to battle through basically anything that is being thrown my way so I can show up on race day and make sure I'm as prepared as possible. So that's basically the goal of training whenever it's crappy out in any conditions. I want to be as prepared as possible when I show up on race day. So whether it's raining, whether it's snowing, whether it's hailing, maybe not hail. I don't know. I rode in hail. It, <laughs> it sucks. But just training as much as possible in any circumstances so I can show up on race day and I know I put in the effort. I went through that shit time and it's like when I show up on race day, it's like, this is easy. This is easy. I've trained for this. So that's the main goal with doing this. So I appreciate you watching and we'll catch you in the next one.